5.58, he can normally just pop over this uh, without any problem. Mondo Duplantis, the Olympic champion, and there you go. Early sighter for Duplantis. Kendricks, as ever, came in very early, 5.43, clear at that. Nielsen, the Olympic medalist as well, Morganov. Had a bit of a disappointing season. They all uh, had an early sight of it, as indeed did Casey Lightfoot, but this is our first look at Duplantis. And I'm sure we're going to see, well, let's hope we see a lot more of him. If he weren't with us earlier... The scene in the Lenzigrund, complete darkness over the city and the arena now. Sam Kendricks then, 5.58, no problem. For the reigning world champion now, 5.73. This is the next height to maintain his clean card, and does so. Yep, Kendricks, world champion in 2017 and 2019. Looks a little out of sorts, perhaps in uh, Paris, where he finished in fourth place in 5.73, this height, but he's made that with consummate ease, hasn't he? Second in Lausanne a couple of days before Paris, two weeks ago with 5.82. Conditions pretty much perfect. Here's the winner in Lausanne. Yep, he remembered 2021. The rest of his life, I'm pretty sure. Chris Nielsen. Ah, nicely over. So the big men coming to the fore. Still a little early. Duplantis has passed at this height, incidentally. So Kendrick's clear. Nielsen now clear. Only six in the field, as we've been mentioning, in all of the field events, because we've got so many field events. Uh, nine tonight. We had, I can't remember how many we had last night. One, two, three, four, five. Did we, I think we had five field events last night. Is that right? A lot of discussion, was it? Was, would you like to share? Yes! From Tom Berry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Mutaz Bashim uh, agreed. Anyway, this is Morganov. This pole vault getting interesting. Bart now going up, it's done, cause a problem for one or two. Morganov, you remember when he came on the scene two, three years ago, and we thought this guy is really going to be up there, and he just hasn't quite produced, has he? Hasn't advanced to, and, and create the consistency that you need to be up there with Duplantis and Kendricks and uh, Nielsen. But a nice first time clearance for him at 5.83. Sets him up nicely at the moment. So Sam Kendricks, nice card so far, came in early, 5.43. Such a shame for him. Got a positive COVID test, couldn't compete in Tokyo. But lovely clearance there. So clear it, 73 and 83 first time. So that will keep him essentially tied for the lead. Nobody can produce anything better than that. And Duplantis did pass at 5.73. Kendrick scores clear. And it actually looks as though he's ready for this tonight. So first attempt again for Duplantis having passed at the earlier height. And if you did watch that one, or oh, we did watch it, didn't we? The 5.58, it made it look silly. Olympic champion, world record holder. It's just like somebody going and making a cup of tea, isn't it? You know, you go, oh, put the kettle on, plug it in, let it boil, there you go. It's just, it just goes through the motions almost here, and, and it isn't like that. He's just making it look so simple, so easy. And these heights, you know, 583s, many vaulters will never ever get this high in their careers. Special talent. Still improving. Obiena, the bar of 5.83. A Philippine athlete who's pushed himself to the fore, keeps getting better all of the time, and nicely done there. Cleared 5.91 recently for a new national record, and now he finds himself. It was a nice second attempt here. That 591 coming in the Paris Diamond League and clearing 583 to stay stay in with the big boys. Duplantis clear, Kendrick's clear. We saw Morganov go clear. 
Uh, Nielsen in a bit of trouble at this height, as indeed is Casey Lightfoot, his teammate. And Obiena, who trains with Thiago Braz in uh, Italy, I think their summer training camp. This is Casey Lightfoot then, third attempt. Yep, under a bit of pressure here, the uh, Olympic fourth placer, the uh, youngster in the US squad. Oh, ho, ho. gives it a little touch, a tickle. He cleared the previous height, third time of asking. 5.73 and 5.83, third time as well. It's building wonderfully, this contest. Oh, I think he touches it most of the way round, but never really moves it significantly. Yeah, great to see them all uh, managing to stay involved. 5.83. Well, his friends, very close friends, I think their families watched the Olympics together, if I remember reading that somewhere. Nielsen and Lightfoot. Third attempt for Nielsen. Oh, and he's done as well. Joins the party. <laughs> what a relief. Didn't want to be left out there, did he? So all six men clear at 5.83. We could be in for a real humdinger here tonight. Duplantis and Kendricks Lee, they're clear all the way through to this point. Obiena took two attempts, Nielsen and Lightfoot three attempts. I don't think this is a common occurrence, Steve. Six athletes, the entire yeah. field, over 583. I think that's pretty special, pretty rare. I know the stat specialists will be charging off to their records now. His first attempt, 593. Great pole vault competition. There you go. First time clearances mean a lot to him when they, he can see that the other guys are up for it tonight. And let's hope that Duplantis responds by going higher. He now just, when you get to these heights, just then all of a sudden it begins to look like a little bit more workmanlike, but I use that term lightly. He's delighted to go clear with a first time effort. Look at that, like almost a... Trying to work out how to describe that. I mean, his knees and uh, chest are almost coming together there as he bends his way over that bar. It's not about putting pressure on the others because they know how good he is, but uh, Morgan, I'll see if he can respond. Second attempt, 5.93. There you go. This guy's so talented. When he gets it right, when he's on form, focused he could be part of this incredible group Lisek not here of course the brilliant pole but Morganov joining Duplantis with a season's best performance there 593 I said he has jumped six meters but he he's sometimes doesn't have the consistency that the others have but looks good tonight Congratulated by Duplantis. So the game on then. Sam Kendricks is at a failure at 5.93. Two-time world champion. Oh, just gives it a little nod on the way up there, but clear. And he's delighted with that as well. Just watch this. Just as he's wrapping itself around, I think maybe his knee on the way over, just giving it a little on his uh, on his right hand side. He can see, yeah, it's his shins and his knees. He genuinely did give that a, uh, a decent look, didn't he? Got to know the bar very well, shall we say? Kendricks clear though, 593. Three men clear so far. Probably Duplantis failed his first attempt at 598. It's human after all. Second attempt. There you go. Nicely clear. Come on, he says. Give me a bit of support. They're loving it on the top end there. Absolutely packed here in the Lepsa Grunt. Great atmosphere. And Duplantis with Kendricks and Morganov for company at 598. They all failed their first attempt. Duplantis now clear, though. Still that high point. 
just a little ahead of the bar. But enough awareness to flip himself around and over and leads, as you'd expect, the Olympic champion and world record holder, 598. Kendricks and Morganov will have to see if they can match him. Sam Kendricks then has one attempt left. He's had two failures at 598. Saw the planters go over that at the second time. This is one and only attempt at 603. No. No, not for Sam on this occasion. He is a 606 Volta. He's been there before, did it in Des Moines. I saw it a couple of years back. But uh, in Iowa. But uh, Kendricks there having to settle for second place. And uh, Morganov third. Duplantis is confirmed with that 5.98 second time clearance as the winner. But he's vaulting better tonight, I think, Sam Kendricks, than for many, many weeks. 5.93 second time. And that's a good attempt at 6.03. He's not a long way off that, you know. Shame that the season's petering out for these fellas. At six centimetres, it's all about him now. So many times this is the case. Here he goes. Oh, he's got it! Six metres six. What a performer. A little bit of a glitch at 5.98 when he had two attempts to get over that height. But... That looks superb. Well, he just keeps gathering records all the time. He already had the meeting record here, of course. He's not going to get the Diamond League record unless he goes for the world record, which he, uh, he owns as well. That was set in wrong. But six metres six, and you get the feeling that despite everything else is finished here, except for him and Tamberi, Tamberi in the high jump, to plant us at the other end of the stadium in the pole vault and he has just set that top bend alight with this clearance at six meters and six and I'm pretty sure he's gonna decide to go higher will he attempt a world record well it looks like the bar <laughs> anyway yes as I was saying so he broke the world record in Glasgow indoors at 618 that's the indoor world record. Outdoors, he broke the world record in Rome, 6.15. So this would be an outright world record, indoors or out. The bar is at 6 metres and 19 centimetres. An incredible achievement if he were to make it. Mondo Duplantis, first attempt, 6.19. A new world record if he gets it. Oh, that's not bad. He holds his head. He holds his head because he, he must feel here that he's got the chance. They won't come around too many times in his career. As good as he is, you take the nights when you feel good and you could know that you've got the stretch there. Tim, that was not bad at all, was it? Let's have another look. No, I think you're right, Steve. I think the height was almost there. He is capable of this, we know it. He's capable of this and much higher. It's been a long old year and I just wonder if the fatigue is creeping in a little bit. But this uh, competition after all, well, it got underway officially at 8.15, nearly two hours ago now, local time. And of course, they were out there for a long time before that 8.15 start. It's been a long old season too. And you know, I've been looking at some athletes' cards today and athletes have been racing who did an indoor season. I mean, he won the European indoors in Torun. Athletes have been competing outdoors since March, April. It's, uh, I mean, Kate Grace, that's who I was looking at. She was breaking two minutes back in, back in April, I think it was. And here we are five months later, and she's still doing it. Think about next year. You've got World Championships, which have been rearranged, of course, because the Olympics were rearranged. Uh, there'll be a Commonwealth Games uh, for those who are involved in that, and then a, a European Championship. So, um, actually, British athletes, uh, another one or two others, will have three championships. But it's going to be a busy season next year with Diamond League events as well to fit in there. Tamberi doesn't mind at the minute, does he? He's enjoying it. Uh, Carson Valholm and uh, Spanovic, whose uh, competition was yesterday. Uh, he obviously was tonight. Ryan Krauser in the background, the familiar Stetson 
I think, I, I mean, Mondo, you know, sometimes he just calls it, he, he does an attempt and says, OK, fair enough, I'm not going to get it tonight. But I just get the feeling he wants to have a go here tonight. He thinks he can get this. He really does. Now the dilemma increases, Steve, because proceedings being delayed further and further after what was meant to be a... Uh, let's end at around 10 o'clock, just before 10 o'clock local time. And Duplantis has the option to take two more attempts. I mean, that's going to take another 15 minutes or something. Uh, Sidorova and Lazitskina, they're just having a conversation. Sidorova cleared five metres. It's a night for pole vaulting. What's the decision? Dad, Greg, chatting with Mondo. What's the decision? Chado. So that's the champions waiting patiently. Yeah, waiting. So I, want, I want my dinner. Rojas, Kipiegon, Leon Saba. Well, <laughs> Tim, the white flag's gone up, which means that we are going to have at least one more attempt from Mondo Duplantis. The clock hasn't started yet, though. Uh, a word on Leah Sprunger, because uh, she said a farewell in Lausanne and a farewell here. She did say early on the season, didn't she, that this would be her last year. I think there's the tears coming. She's been a great servant uh, to Swiss athletics at a time when there weren't so many good Swiss athletes. And actually, she's seen the Cambodges and the Del Ponte, their relay team, and others really come to the fore. Um, on the men's side as well, we saw E. Hammer, the uh, very good young decathlete. So, well done to her, and the nice that she could leave on the home stage. It's a good point you make, Steve. I always say to athletes who are thinking of retiring, you are a long time retired. You know, give it an awful lot of thought because uh, it's tough to come back, and they are special days as a, an international athlete on the professional scene, on the circuit, enjoying the travel and the hotels and the camaraderie and the medals and the money. It's a... Uh, a lot to say goodbye to, that, uh, those tears are, are more than justified. Well, it doesn't he uh, just love it, Tamberi? Shy type, isn't he? He always has been, I'm glad yeah, he's yeah. come out of his shell a little bit. Shy and retiring, as they say. Love him, though, don't we? Uh, you know, he's so... As I said, you have to back up the the you know the the showmanship with performances. He does that time and time again. Mondo is composing himself. He gets a few minutes between attempts. I'm just the clock is uh, ticking down. He's got that five minutes. He's got four minutes left, in which he needs to. There it is. Just over four minutes. When you're in the presence of what is effectively a genius like this for athletes like sam kendricks who's world champion it must be quite tough mentally because you're, you're sort of saying yep yeah, i've got to keep believing i can beat you but actually you are beginning to take this event into a new new age a new well, territory Bolt, Bolt was doing the same for for you know seven eight years um and you know kendricks has had it i would say he's had his time he's a brilliant vaulter and could and he's probably will still go higher um and he's talked about what, how Duplantis has helped them reset their goals. Of course he does. But it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to compete with him, particularly <laughs> if he goes to 619, for instance. But, you know, I constantly read athletes' quotes being quoted as saying, yeah, I, I always believe I can win. And quite often I read it and I look at the athlete and I go, no, you didn't. You must have known that <laughs> athlete A, B, or C was a lot quicker or could throw a lot further or jump a lot further than you. But... There's maybe, always a, maybe there's a bit of help, self hypnosis yeah. going on. There's always a sense in the pole vault, though, that it that it could go wrong. Isn't yeah, it? vertical jumps more than yeah. any other um, discipline, I suppose. So he's had what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven vaults. That's all. He's still pretty fresh. Yeah, I think that's on key. tonight's work. I think that's key, isn't it? I think that's part of the decision making. Yeah, he's had, he had all his first time clearance, so he has he hasn't had lots of vaults tonight. Holly Bradshaw, David Najot, everybody watching, everybody clapping. So here we go, a second attempt at 6 metres 19, a new world record, an outright world record for Duplantis if he gets it. No, that wasn't a 
good attempt at all. Will he bother up with a third attempt after that, Steve? You know, as they go higher, you, you're changing poles, trying to manage that pole there. You can just see, didn't get the plant right at all. Couldn't control the pole. So much goes into it. I mean, as I was saying earlier on, he makes it look so easy when it is easy. And then he just looks like everybody else when it suddenly gets to these big heights. And why not? He should do. It, it's a world record. It's a phenomenal world record. It shouldn't be easy. It's funny though, isn't it? Because when, when everything comes together, and he gets that chemistry right with the different factors of the bolt. He can look supreme and he can go above six metres and higher, looking easy and clear it by big margins. And I'm sure that we have seen some of his bigger bolts in recent years where he's actually gone over much higher than 619. You, know, you look at the margin of clearance sometimes and it is vast. But it's the psychological challenge of knowing the bar is at 619 creates a, a different factor really in the, in the whole equation. Here's what will happen because he's, you know, he, he he will be mixing with everybody back in the uh, hotel, which is just a matter of yards away from here, where all the athletes are staying, and they'll all be back for the uh, last end of season meal. And uh, you bet you'll get he'll get some ribbing in there when they'll all be saying, "You kept us all waiting, mate." They won't, they won't care though if he gets a world record. They really won't care. I think they'd be delighted if he did, and Absolutely. would give him less ripping, maybe. Absolutely. Well, we're just going to take a little look back on some of yesterday's events. If you weren't with us, uh, we were down at the city centre in front of the Opera House with a spectacular track that was laid out, 563-metre track for the two 5,000-metre races. And Nian Saba got the, bet the, got the better of Helen O'Beary. And the sunshine, big crowd, 2,500 people squeezed into this specially built arena. And Nian Saba came away with yet another impressive victory over Obiri to add to the great 3,000 meter win when she ran 8.19 and she just keeps breaking records here 14.28 this time for 5,000 meters wonderful performance from her and we saw a good race in the men's race as well and Keith Saba she did uh, we'll give come her all that in a second, but uh, Tim the field was uh, brilliant, wasn't it? Well, as ever, of course, sir. Uh, Ryan Krauser, irresistible. The world record holder, the Olympic champion, producing just astonishing performances. Meeting after meeting after meeting, and uh, Krauser with uh, his third round throw going out to 22.67. He'd opened with 21.98. These uh, performances in the field events yesterday were legitimate for record purposes. This was a new meeting record, 2267. Of course, the 5,000 meter races were not valid for record purposes, but uh, 2267 ahead of Co Joe Kovacs, 2229 was immense. We had an incredible high jump competition with the three Olympic medalists going head to head. The bar kept going higher, and then eventually Lazard Skane with this. Brilliant clearance when she'd been in trouble earlier on. Looked as though, I think she had three attempts at 196. But then this clearance at two meters and five secured the win. McDermott had pushed her all the way, as indeed had the young Ukrainian Mahuchik. Mahuchik cleared 2-3, McDermott cleared 2-1 and had a very, very good attempt at 2-3, having passed two of her attempts at, uh, sorry, at 2-5 having passed two of her attempts at 2-3, but the Olympic champion came out on top. The men's 5,000 metres, well, Aragawi took it on a lap or so out and uh, ran away from the opposition. Strong field, too, it was. Aragawi of Ethiopia coming home in 12.58.65 ahead of Bahrain's uh, Beilu, 13.01, and Jacob Kropp. 13.01 as well. Kimeli and Kajelcha, fourth and fifth, in a tremendously strong field. But from this youngster, and he is young, he's uh, Aragawi, just 20 years old, the winner in that 5,000. What a year he's going to have next year. 
Okay, so one very good attempt, one uh, not so good in the sense of uh, context of what we are watching here. Six meters 18, the world record indoors, 615 outdoors. This, an outright world record, six meters 19. Tamberi leading the support from the crowd, from the other athletes, everybody watching Duplantis. Third attempt here. He's got a couple of minutes left on the clock yet. We'll just try and compose himself. Sepko down there as well. What a place to do it. Letigrun, one of the great athletic stadiums. One of the uh, best in the world, you would have to say. Not only for the setting, but the crowd, the atmosphere generated. And they've seen some world records over the years, but this would be special. Can he take the energy from the crowd, propel himself over this bar? Mondo Duplantis of Sweden attempting a new world record, third attempt. Oh. Well, not to be... <laughs> He's kept everybody waiting, they won't mind. Uh, first attempt, probably the best of the three. But six metres six nonetheless tonight. A great display from him. It was a very good pole vault competition overall as well. But as ever, Duplantis coming out as the winner. Adds the Diamond League title to his Olympic title. And finally, we can say the Diamond League athletic season is over. Steve, in terms of strength and depth, that was one of the greatest pole vault competitions in history with six men, all six entrants getting over 583. It's only happened once before outdoors. I think it's happened before indoors at a slightly higher height. But uh, this is a special crop of pole vaults we're seeing at the moment and none more special than this young man. He will go high, that 619 will become history. He'll go over it and he'll go much higher in years to come. So easy to forget that he's just 21 years old. He and Inge Britson and one or two others are it's such tender years. You know, when you think that, we traditionally we think that your best years as a track and field athlete, almost irrespective of discipline, are probably between, what, 24 and 28. That's the, that's the sweet spot, I think, in most, most events, most careers. Well, what a night it's been. That's the last of our Diamond League champions crown. 25 here tonight. They'll be having their parade very, very shortly. There's the result of the pole vault. Duplantis winning 6 metres 6. Kendricks second with the season's best 5.93. Morganoff taking third. Been a brilliant night here in Zurich. The presentation's yet to come, but thank you for staying with us for what's been a great end to the season.